Good evening. We are here tonight. We're starting off with a budget workshop. We will have the school budget presented to us. Superintendent, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Councilors. Uh, Bill Webster, Superintendent of Schools, and I'm here with um, Bobby Avery, who uh, joined us a couple months ago as our Chief Administrative Officer. So, um, your chance to, to meet Bobby for some of you for the first time. Each of you have a, a hard copy. Uh, I'm going to go through uh, slides. Um, this presentation is not intended to be all inclusive. Separately, you have a memo, you have a budget worksheet, a workbook. You've got um, the Warren articles, and you also have a two-page summary of the budget. And as I had indicated in my cover memo, some of this will be a re repeat for you, so my apologies on that, but I thought that given that the um, televised audience will likely be greater tonight, that I really should um, um, make sure that I have a complete presentation. As you know, we've had eight uh, budget uh, sessions in March, and the school committee approved uh, the amended budget on April 9th. So this was a couple weeks after our workshop, and I'll go over some of the adjustments uh, that were made in the budget since then. City Council is scheduled to act on the budget on May 1st. We have a budget informational meeting at Geiger on May 3rd. And then uh, right now scheduled is the validation referendum on May 8th. The, um, just because of the timing and printing um, this week, there'll be a flyer that will go to the print shop. And it is subject, obviously, to w the action of the council. But in order to get it in homes, we have to, to get it there early enough. I will be covering the uh, state's funding formula model talking about minimum required local share, which is a big issue for Lewiston. Uh, what are the approval requirements for a budget? I'll summarize our draft budget and give um, some indications of how the council or others might assess our overall budget. So state funding for education <clears throat> changed significantly in 2005 when the state adopted a program called Essential Programs and Services. And it's uh, referred to as EPS. And uh, also the form that it comes out on is the ED-279, which may not mean anything, not necessarily. It should mean anything to any of you, but that's used quite a bit in the state. At the time when it was adopted, and there was a, a research study that indicated or that made recommendations about what a school district should spend on education at a minimum, but the state was unable to fund the program fully at that time. Again, this is 2005. And because of those budget challenges, they put in limiting the model to 97%. And that 97% has been around since 2005. And once the model determines what should be spent on, on education at a minimum, it's then split between the state share and the local share. So effective as things now stand with the legislature, on July 1st for FY19, the model increases to 100%. And that will increase both the state share, which is nice, but also increases the local share, which is maybe not so nice. But let's talk a little more about that. So every year, Lewiston has been at the minimum required local share, which is, again, 97% of EPS. And that difference between the 97% and the 100% represents and has represented each year roughly $2 million, meaning that Lewiston has consistently funded $2 million less than what the model would recommend but again, the model was adjusted at not, to 97%. Now, if we had that $2 million, or had we had that $2 million from the beginning, these are just some of those things that perhaps could have been funded with it. 67 educational technicians, or 40 teachers, 
30 teachers, 17 ed techs, or any other allocation that you might, might think about. Now from a statewide basis, that difference represents or has represented roughly a $100 million shortfall across the state. And because of that, uh, well, you should know there are about 200 school districts in Maine, although every time I look at the DOE site, I get a different number, but I think that's pretty close. And uh, based on some information I had received from Jim Ryer um, two years ago, about 80% of districts raise more than the minimum required local share. DOE has not updated that, um, that information, so I don't know how current that is. So out of roughly 200 districts, uh, four, 40, including Lewiston, only uh, expend the minimum required local share. All the other districts, uh, including many of those around us, raise more than the minimum required local share and uh, often more closely approximate 100% of what that EPS model would be. So here's another way of, of looking at the 100% uh, model, which is in red, and the enacted model at 97% in green. And you can see a shortfall, which is you know, plus or minus $100 million each year. But then you look at FY19, and they come together. And so for the, again, the first time since EPS was adopted, the state budget has EPS at 100%. Now when we look at the state share and the local share, you can see that the uh, state share is in green. And you may recall back uh, um, some years ago, the uh, voters in Maine approved a referendum which said the state would support 55% uh, of education and locals 45. I mean, it's, it's been a, a really a pipe dream, but that's always been out there. And so you can see that locals have consistently funded more than the state share until FY19. And you can see that big jump of roughly $100 million on the state side. But it also resulted in a, um, an increase on the local side. So the state is now funding more than the local, but because of the way they ran it through the formula, there's also the expectation that the local entity will also increase its taxes. So the min required local share. Again, we're at 100% of the EPS model. The, um, the state determines what it will fund and what remains is going to be funded with the local share. And that local share is divided by the state property valuation to determine the state mill rate. And you can see in the funding form, the state mill rate went from 819 to 851, up 3.9%. That mill rate, again, though, is based on the state valuation of Lewiston, or for that matter, uh, locales across the state. Um, our valuation from our assessors tends to lag what the state valuation is. That's why the mill rate in Lewiston for education is over $10, as opposed to what this would be here. So in Lewiston's case, there's a 3.9% increase in the mill rate, as I said on the last slide. In addition, the state has a 1.9% increase in the state valuation of Lewiston. Uh, that's more than what our own uh, local valuation has. These factors together increase our tax commitment share by roughly 5.9% to receive minimum required local share or to be at the minimum required local share. If we continue to fund the minimum required local share, this would put, and I'll talk a little more about it, our local educational tax mill rate at 1073. That's down just a little bit from what it was that you saw a couple weeks ago. And this goes back to FY14. That's an annualized rate of 2.7% on FY19 versus FY18 in itself. It's up about 5%. Mr. Um, Webster? Yes. On the 
<clears throat> budget memo in our packet, it says it's up to 1072, and in the PowerPoint, it's 1073. Could you tell us which figure wow. is correct? Pardon me, Bobby, I'm going to get my file. Maybe you can look, too. So my apologies, this should say 1072. Okay. I think I took an old slide and didn't make that adjustment, so my apologies on that. Thank you. Thank you for raising that question. In terms of the uh, budget approval pro uh, 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 process, you have in your packet the um, 18 Warren articles that constitute the budget. The school committee approves articles 1 to 11, which detail the expenditure by those uh, detailed breakouts. And then the city council and school committee approve the total expenditure article, all the revenue articles in adult education. Those are articles 12 to 18. And if the city council were to approve the total expenditure article of less than what the school committee approved, the school committee would need to reallocate the expenditure breakout articles 1 to 11. Now, what is the impact of raising uh, potentially less than min required local share? Well, in the funding model, the state pays Lewiston 74.2%. And another way of looking at that is that for every 74 cents that the state pays, uh, Lewiston taxpayers pay 26 cents, roughly. Or in other words, for every dollar raised locally, Lewiston receives 288 from the state. So if funding were reduced by a dollar for the local share, Lewiston Public Schools would see a reduced funding of 388. Again, the dollar locally plus the 288 state. So that's the, um, the impact. And here it just shows um, I just happened to pick three numbers. Uh, 20,000 represents roughly one cent on the mill rate. Would constitute, though, a budget reduction of 77,600. And 100,000 would constitute a budget reduction of 388. And the um, 200,000 would constitute a budget reduction of 776. And I think one of the challenges in this is um, the, the impact is potentially compounding because we would still be potentially behind min required local share a year from now. In looking at the, uh, the budget that's uh, outlined in the memo and in the articles, this is at minimum required local share. <coughs> Again, that ensures that we receive 100% state subsidy. The new school represents 37% of our expense increase, so that's and I, I wish it, the state didn't account for it this way. Even though they're paying for the school project, we have to show it in our expenses and we also show it in our revenues. But it, it, it inflates. If, if this were off our books and just at the state level, uh, it would take 4.4% uh, percentage points away from that, that increase. Since the March 26th meeting, and I should mention this slide varies a little bit from what you have, just because I, I wanted to include a little more information. Um, but I didn't think of this till late, so my apologies, it's not on your copy. But since March 26, we did, uh, in, this, in the school committee approved, reducing the budget by approximately $200,000 and five positions. In addition, we picked up $20,000 of city expenses. These are expenses incurred uh, in the finance department. Uh, um, in support of the schools in, in many cases, and we felt that we could 
we appropriately pick up 20,000 of that. And I think that's already been reflected in the city budget side. We also reduced the adult ed assessment by 20,000, which has a direct one penny uh, reduction in the, uh, the school tax. In terms of some statistics, uh, and we'll look at some of the positions that are in this budget, you can see uh, Lewiston's uh, enrollment growth has slowed. It's continuing to go up, but it, but it, it has slowed, and it gives us some uh, comfort that um, we're at a modest rate of growth, which we feel we can accommodate um, uh, in our school buildings and, and also with this budget. It's interesting, and, and uh, this is a slide that I first showed last year. It's been updated. If we look at Lewiston's present enrollment as a percentage of what it was in 2008, you can see we're up to about 115% of that enrollment, where the state overall is something like 93% of what its 08 enrollment is. So that gap between Lewiston and the rest of the state uh, is continuing to grow. Within our budget, uh, we continue to have uh, an increased percentage of English language learners. We're up about 28% uh, now of our uh, total student population. And also something that is uh, going up is our special ed population. We've gone from just over 15% uh, six, seven years ago to about 18% today. Special ed is particularly problematic because in, if you look at your, um, the, the details of the budget by article, uh, article two is special ed, and it's been going up about $2 million a year. The unfortunate thing is, we're, we're, uh, well, I wouldn't say it's unfortunate, but just the fact that we're legally required to provide these services. And, um, you know, I think one of the pluses of our school system is we do a pretty good job of this. But we're also attracting families <coughs> from outside of Lewiston. We're a service center, and uh, some of the smaller districts just don't have the, the programming that we do. So that's something that is attracting families to Lewiston, but also uh, in d uh, additional costs, because there is a two-year lag between special ed expenses that we incur and when we get reimbursed for them from the state. One of the things we're focusing on is providing more in-house options for special ed students because those are less costly than the special purpose private schools like a Margaret Murphy, for example. And I think this slide is kind of telling of what we're dealing with. If you look at the top line, these are District, these are students that are being served in special purpose private schools like Margaret Murphy. They were 130. And we've got that down to 106, still way above any other district in the state. And that reduction, one might think, would be more since our in-district student services for day treatment, so these are severe behavioral, uh, students with severe behavioral issues. RISE, which is essentially an autism program. Uh, we were only serving 36 students. The RISE program didn't even exist in 13, 14. Now we have 128 spots, and yet we've only eliminated 24 spots in the outer district, suggesting that there's roughly uh, you know, 100 students that have these special needs that didn't exist uh, just uh, five years ago. This budget includes um, now 62 new positions. That was uh, 67. Uh, the majority of these are in special ed. You can see the 36. And um, you know, one of the challenges with special ed is that whether we budget for it or not, we're legally required to provide it. So. Um, those positions, uh, if nothing else, will allow us to meet the legal needs of our increased population there, but I think also give us the opportunity to service in-house what would otherwise be more expensive out-of-house or outside. Uh, 
in going down the list here, class size reduction, this includes a number of new classroom teachers, uh, a couple new uh, ed tech uh, uh, library aides, um, and just things that are going to help us deal with reducing class sizes and teach more effectively. The second line, uh, STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. This is increasingly viewed as a, a must program in schools and something that engages kids. And with these three additional positions, we will now have STEM uh, in our K-8 uh, schools, through in all of them. I've already mentioned special ed. ELL uh, staff has got one new position. Again, that reflects, even though it's continuing to grow, um, the, the needs there are not growing exponentially like they were two or three years ago. The next line, alternative education and student supports. This is adding some more alternative education staff as well as social workers to support the general student population. And then finally, technology and facilities, five new positions, and most of those uh, we brought in an outside uh, uh, outfit, Barry Dunn, to review our technology needs, and they've identified a number of upgrades that we need to make, and this reflects those uh, positions in that regard. One of the things that um, I like to focus on is Lewiston High School completion <coughs> rates. Um, this is the, the, the term now that's used for graduation rates. And we, we think in terms of a four-year completion rate, a five-year completion rate, and a six-year completion rate. So last year, 2017, we had 75% of our students who began as freshmen four years prior graduate from high school. Now, that's still not something that we want to be satisfied with, but I am pleased that it represents a significant increase over where we have been, and I'd like to think that's going to continue. Obviously, we can't have a five-year completion rate until this June in regard to what happened last year. So it's going to only uh, get better, and I'd like to think that that, the, that cohort that otherwise would have graduated in 2017 after four years, once we add the five and the six year, I, I think we're going to be around 80 percent, which will, which will be a, a vast improvement. We still want to be better than that. We, we must be better than that, but we're headed in the right direction. Um, <coughs> and I think that um, graduation rates are one of those things that the public look at in terms of evaluating schools. So I think it is appropriate to give us our attention. I think the other, other thing is that um, if we have a freshman that drops out of school, uh, over four years, that's costing us $32,000 in lost state aid, roughly $8,000 in state aid coming to Lewiston. 100 potential dropouts uh, you know, equates to $800,000. So I think not only is this good educationally, but it's good financially for, for, for Lewiston and, and us focusing on improving those completion rates. In terms of reviewing the budget, um, and I know you've got a lot of things to consider, including what's happening on the city side. In your budget book, you receive some details on this. Stu Lewiston stend, spends less per student than most other districts, except our special ed costs are higher. Uh, and. Uh, those are required by law. We do get reimbursed essentially 100% for those, but there is that lag. Our budget is at the minimum required local share, which is what, uh, you know, the, now at 100% is what the model suggests that a district <coughs> should spend at a minimum. I'm also pleased that um, we spend a higher percentage on student instruction than most all other districts in the state. Often when people look at schools' budgets, they're thinking about or expressing concern over administration uh, uh, or money going to administrators. And I think it, and this, I, I included some of a summary of the chart in, your, uh, um, in that budget memo. There are only two other districts in the state of Maine, both much smaller, that uh, spend 
higher percentage than Lewiston. We're at 71.57%, I believe. The other thing I may mention is 85% of our budget covers personnel costs. And one of the things that I'm pleased is so many of our employees choose to live in Lewiston and the surrounding communities and contribute uh, uh, as taxpayers of themselves as well as to our local economy. So that is a um, presentation. Uh, again, you've got a lot of material, more than what I've gone over here. Uh, I'd be pleased to answer any questions, and I'll also be quick to turn to Bobby as you get into some of the details, perhaps. Thank you. Questions from the council? Council Lisson. Recently, there was a discussion concerning, I don't know if it was a grant from the state encouraging regional cooperation, and the school committee voted kind of a split vote to, uh, could, could you explain that, uh, that impact on this, impact on, and I, and I think I liked what you said earlier about, you know, are we educating our children? You know, that should be the goal and objective. Put it in those terms, you know. Since the, it seems like the school committee has says this budget does does do that, but without that, why was that eliminated, and, and what impact does that? Mm -hmm. So, last July, when the state budget um, <coughs> passed in the wee hours of July first, I believe, one of the components of the state budget was the um, adding incentives for joining what are called uh, regional service centers. Many viewed it as a penalty because if you didn't join, you didn't get that additional money. The uh, school committee has um, been abreast of the regional service centers since last September. They've expressed some concern along the way uh, but we're definitely interested in understanding more and at least pursuing those initial steps which were without any additional cost to the district. So in July, excuse me, in November, Lewiston along with Auburn, uh, Poland, which is uh, RSU 16, and uh, uh, Turner area, which is uh, MSAD 52, put in a uh, proposal for a regional service center. We just had to fill out a one-page sheet. This is uh, end of November. Because of that, they put in our subsidy calculation the additional money that we would get if we continued the process. And that additional money was $191,000 and some change, so roughly $200,000. And that was put in the initial budget as a revenue source. When this was presented to the school committee in, in more depth with the actual agreement, which had been drafted by uh, our attorneys, there were a number of concerns expressed, not the least of which was, what if we join one of these and then later on want to get out? And it was pretty unclear what the implications of that might be. And concerns expressed by some that if voters because it does have to go to voters to enter it, um, but yet the school committee could arguably override what voters had chosen to do uh, if they wanted to get out. Because of some of those unanswered questions, the school committee, um, in a split vote, voted not to enter the regional service center, which gave rise to the need to cut 200000 from our budget. Since that time, um, and you can imagine that, that the, um, the administration in Augusta uh, through DOE is very interested in these regional service centers moving forward. They're felt to be a way, and in theory, they are a way where multiple districts could combine resources, maybe do a joint purchasing, uh, maybe do some other things on a regional basis that could potentially save money. So um, 
the state, <clears throat> excuse me, I should have brought some water. I see, oh, maybe yes. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Ray. <laughs> Mary Payne, who is the uh, Director of Strategic Initiatives reporting directly to the Educational Commissioner, has uh, offered to come before the Lewiston School Committee and answer their questions. So she is slated to come on Monday. And uh, you know, time will tell whether or not the School Committee will choose to revisit uh, this issue. I might also say that um, City Administrator Ed Barrett and I have also had some discussions with some of our legislators about different approaches that could potentially benefit Lewiston by reducing uh, the minimum required local share. And so one of the possibilities, maybe remote possibility, was if the school committee were to change its mind and decide to enter regional service centers because some of their concerns are, are addressed by Mary Payne, is there some way that that money could be used to reduce the local tax rate? Because be, that would be roughly 10 cents. And um, if nothing happens with the um, funding formula as presently uh, um, in law, uh, it would not impact that. Um, however, if the 100% were reduced, say, to 99% or a little less than that through legislation, uh, then we could keep our budget as presented here, and those funds could be used to reduce the local tax rate increase by, by 10 cents. Um, I have no idea what is going to happen in Augusta, and I'm not sure that many other people do either, but uh, that's one of the things we've least, least talked about. So uh, we will know after Monday whether um, or not the school committee wishes to reconsider and to vote. If they do vote and nothing else happens, that would be a pool of money that would remain available for either emergency use or to be applied to a subsequent uh, budget. Not, not FY19, but, but FY20 uh, or beyond. So it's a long window. I, ho I hope I answered your question. Well, I think the, uh, the, the biggest concern, as I understand it, from the school committee was they didn't want to enter into something and then later on decide that it was better not to have entered into something and yet have a remaining financial obligation because of things that the Regional Service Center might be doing at that point in time. They've also expressed uh, interest in changing the, uh, the governance structure a little bit so there'd be a direct representative from the school committee in there. And that's something that I, that I think is doable. Thank you. Councilor Pettengill. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I, I don't have any questions, but uh, more um, some statements uh, in regards to the budget. And I just want to thank everybody for, for being here tonight for this. Um, and I, I apologize, I wrote everything down. I'm very passionate about education and I didn't want to miss or uh, overlook anything. Um, but after hearing the presentation of the budget a couple of times, having read it thoroughly um, myself over a weekend, I have some tremendous concerns. Um, after doing some research, uh, Lewiston appears to be spending a lot of money uh, on the entity that is the school department. Uh, and I say that because there's a lot of facets 
to that. Uh, but the money spent on our students doesn't seem to be yielding any tangible results. At the first meeting, an excellent point was brought up by an outstanding citizen who said that taking on the financial burdens of our schools might be better if we could see what we were getting from that. But we aren't. Our graduation rates are amongst the lowest in the state for larger schools. At the first presentation, I asked a, a question about graduation rates since it seemed the formula and definition had changed, and you told me you agreed with that. On the Department of Education website, it does not appear to be the case and specifically states that graduation rates do not include students who uh, achieve a non-traditional four-year diploma in five or six years, as myself and the public were told at that meeting. My best assumption is this is an internal standard um, to make our graduation numbers appear better. 2017 costs for school administrative units uh, lists us at spending 71% on student instruction. This places us, in, uh, places us third in the state. For 2016, Bangor, with a similar size, had a gradu graduation rate of 87%. I don't have the 2016 cost, but their 2017 cost on student instruction is 65%, and they have a much higher graduation rate than we do. Across the board, we spend much more than every other district. In 2017, we spent almost $1 million more on transportation than the entirety of the public Portland schools, or uh, Portland public schools. Uh, the subject of the unexpended funds uh, to the tune of $1.8 million uh, makes me a little upset, as it should the, the students, or uh, sorry, the citizens. Um, in the budget, it lists that um, does not know what to do with this taxpayer money, nor does, it, nor does it have a plan in place to do something with this money, but merely a suggestion that maybe they should. I personally uh, would love to see this fund balance uh, policy or procedure completed to the start, before the start of the 2018 school year, and presented to the city and the city council in a manner uh, easily understood by all. If anybody's tried to navigate the school budget, it is a monster. Um, luckily for myself, I deal with the state in my day job, and my wife is a certified state teacher, so I, I had, had a fair amount of help. Um, I, I am disappointed to hear, though, that adult ed won't be receiving the funding they asked for, which, if they had got, is a one cent increase on the tax rate, which compared to the 53, 54 cents is a moot point. Um, one of the first things this council was tasked tasked with uh, was saying if we approve supporting our new manor population with some funds from the state. Regardless of what side of that argument you sat on, everybody came to an agreement that we should put more money into our adult ed services. This seems to be counterintuitive to that. Um, one of the stated goals at the first presentation and then mentioned again tonight was a reduction in class sizes. For the record, I am not advocating for larger class sizes. That is not the way to go. But according to the budget chart that lists uh, staffing ratios, ED279, and the rule chapters for the Department of Education, 05-071, Chapter 125, Section 7.2C, the ratios prov uh, will provide a template and not a staffing mandate for the school administra uh, administrative unit unless otherwise provided by statute. Um, the goal listed on that is already half of the state recommended ratio of 30 to 1. Could not find any mention of ratios in relation to guidance, librarians, health, ed techs, library techs, clerical, and then finally school administration as listed on there. Uh, I am relieved though. Um, much to Councillor uh, License dismay, I believe, uh, that no regionalization matters will be happening. Uh, we just voted this down a few months ago. I don't, uh, it didn't, be we didn't think it would benefit our cities. I don't know why we would think it would benefit our schools and our students. Um, lastly, I would like to make a request of the superintendent and our school department, uh, if we could please come up with another acronym for our special education department. Um, I think it's time we stop using the initials um, I nearly fell out of my chair at the first presentation uh, when this was said out loud uh, by a couple of different people. Um, it was referenced in, uh, in tonight's handout as well on one of the slides. In closing, 
Um, I'd like to say that with the six years I've been actively involved in educating our youth, um, in the 12 years I've been married to a certified state teacher, education is the key to our future and our prosperity. Um, fully understand that there's not much we can do about federal and state funding uh, requirements, I get it. Um, but I do expect that when my money and everybody else's money uh, is requested more and more year on year, um, that I, I get I get what we're, we're paying for um, and that it's spent appropriately with the intent and purpose of doing better for our students. Um, it was said before that if I'm expected to spend more, I in turn uh, expect to see more. Uh, and lastly, uh, at our last presentation, uh, Mr. Webster, you had referenced that teachers only work about 75% of the day. Um, for the dozens and dozens of teachers I know uh, personally and the hundreds more that my wife knows, I'm, I'm offended by that. Um, I know the nights and weekends um, and breaks and summers that are dedicated to school work. Um, and then, you know, even just the personal money spent on, on classroom items that they wouldn't normally have or that parents are um, asked to donate at the beginning of the year, like tissues and wipes and Lysol wipes for, for the classroom. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb, um, but I'd wager statements like that are a direct reflection of why Lewiston is such a high uh, teacher turnover rate. Um, as they come to Lewiston, get hired, spend a couple of years here, and then move on to different, uh, different districts to work. I think we all know that teachers aren't in it for the money. It's for the passion and to do better for our students. Um, I personally am not voting in favor of the budget. Um, you know, and I ask that one's brought back that truly respects our students, teachers, and taxpayers. Um, you know, and I, I urge that the council to do so too. It's, it's time. It's time that we actually do what's right for, for our students. Thank you. Thank you Councilor. Mr. Mayor, could I just respond to a, a couple of things? You may. Thank you. Because um, I wanted to make sure that uh, uh, um, there weren't any misinterpretations of some things that, uh, that I may have said earlier. Uh, the graduation rate improvement that, that I cited was uh, state numbers, they haven't updated their website yet, as far as I know, but uh, that increased to s from 68% to 75% last year, I think is a direct reflection of uh, some of the work that we've been doing. Uh, you compared us to uh, Bangor. Um, I don't have Bangor's uh, free and reduced lunch rate in front of us, in front of uh, me, but I uh, su suffice to say that Poverty in Lewiston uh, is much greater than what we experience in Bangor. And um, the, uh, um, I think that we need every bit of the expenditures in, in our classrooms and, and should be spending more than Bangor as a percentage of a budget. Uh, there's reference made to uh, uh, transportation costs. Uh, I haven't checked uh, with Portland of late, but this city made a big decision uh, uh, several years ago to not have students on the regular public transportation. And uh, at least when I lived in uh, Portland, uh, they used the regular public <coughs> transportation buses, which certainly would be cheaper, but I'm not sure it would be educationally appropriate. But that's one thing that is there. Um, and I'm, I didn't write fast enough on some of these, but you talked about adult data. I want you to, to know that we are taking out of adults' ed fund balance that 20000 that otherwise would have been raised in taxes. We can't do that every year because the fund balance would get to be negative. But, but we could do it for this year, and, and it was our attempt to still maintain adult ed at, the, at their requests, requested programming, but to reduce the city taxes by, by a, a penny. Um, the, um, I'm not sure, uh, um, well, I think that uh, when I t was talking about 75% of the day, teachers work 100% of the day and, and into the night. What I was referring to was that they 
are not in front of their classrooms 100% of the time because they need to plan. They need to work with their colleagues. And that on average, a teacher <coughs> is uh, doing direct instruction probably 75, 80% of the time, and that other 20% is their, their collaborating with their colleagues and, and, and planning uh, for uh, uh, future, future lessons. Um, you mentioned uh, teacher turnover. Uh, I've compared our turnover to other districts. Uh, we're right in line. I'm not saying we shouldn't be better. So I, I think that that is in, indeed something that uh, we need to reflect on and, and, and do better. And I, um, if I wanted to make sure I understood uh, your concern about uh, acronym uh, and uh, um, the, uh, I'll definitely try to be better that. And, and I will say this just, I wish we had a different word than special ed. Yeah. Because it's a, um, for too many in our population, they don't view it as something that can help them, their son or daughters, uh, do better in school. And that name doesn't help. But, right. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Ray. So first of all, thank you to Superintendent Webster and Ms. Avery. Um, and thank you to my colleagues from the school committee who are here tonight and who can't be here tonight. Um, for the public's information, I am the city council representative to the school committee and I can assure you many hours were spent by the school committee um, debating the best use of our minimum local funding expenditure. Um, I also Alex. must note that I didn't quite realize the extent of social emotional needs of our students until um, hearing from our educators and our administrators about this and finding that understanding for special education and for um, some of the social work and other um, diversion programs that we work with. Um, it's really uh, a cost driver for Lewiston and we are doing the right thing by funding those. Um, so again, it is minimum required local share and we have used that money appropriately as deemed by the school committee. Um, we voted unanimously in favor of it. Um, so it's a budget we can stand behind. Um, and I'd invite anyone who has questions from the public to reach out to myself on my school committee account or and I'm sure other school committee committee members would concur with that. Um, so thank you all for being here for that. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, Councilors. Thank you. Are you doing the gold main? Who's doing the Misty is. Is she here? Misty. Let's see our guest I am. Okay. I think everybody's aware that uh, Build Maine has been holding an annual conference here in Lewiston. I think they've done it for three years. So this is the fourth year. Each year they try to have some kind of community involved um, event or example uh, of something to be done in the community. This year they are apparently looking at um, the potential to do murals. Uh, one would be done on a private building, and the second one they're interested in doing would be on the Saunerville garage on the Pine Street side. I think I included a, exam a picture of what that looks like. It's not exactly the most architecturally beautiful part of the, of the city, um, but they would need to have an answer on whether we were willing to support that this month so that they can line up the, the artists necessary. We also recognize that if we want to go along with this, we need to have some form of approval mechanism in place. Our suggestion was a committee composed of a couple of folks that are active in the local arts community, uh, the mayor, uh, the council chair, and uh, see Carl Schleen has walked in. He's, as you know, associated with centers with, with Maple Way Dental. Um, his facility looks exactly across the street at where we're talking about, so he's expressed an interest also in being involved in that committee and being involved in that work. In fact, 
Carl approached us saying, you know, even before this came up, saying, you know, that's not a, exactly the most artistic view from his facility, and he'd like to see something more interesting done there. So we wanted to bring that in, to, to your attention to see if you were willing to go along with the proposal, uh, recognizing that what was actually done would have to be approved by a committee, including some local folks who are active in the arts community, the mayor, the council chair, and, and now Carl has expressed an interest in participating. So I basically need a thumbs up or thumbs down. Okay, that was easy. Carl, yeah. did you want to say anything? Um, you do. I had a chance today, by the way, to walk through. I, it was nice to visit a dentist's office and not have to worry about any, you know. <laughs> um, had a chance to walk through his facility today, and he's promised us an open house at some time in the near future where you all get a chance to see what they've done to the building, which is quite impressive. Uh, yes, my name is uh, Carl Schleen. I'm the office manager for Ma Maple Way Dental Counter. I live at 17 Cherrywood Drive in Lewiston. And Ed is correct, I gave him a tutor, tour, but uh, I declined to pull any of his teeth at the time. So, <laughs> um, Yeah, no, I, I'm excited that um, there could be some possibility uh, for artwork of some sort uh, on the garage. And um, yeah, and I think it uh, it's, uh, would be great to have um, uh, you know, local businesses who, uh, who, who would view this on a daily basis uh, have some input. So, um, yeah, if, it's, if it pleases the, the council and the city manager, I would love to, to serve on the committee. Thank you. I'll give a thumbs up to Carl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I guess that gives us uh, nine minutes.
Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. So we're going to start out today with some uh, good news, as we frequently seem to have lately in this city. And I think we're going to start today with our uh, three-time, in a row, state champion hockey team. Right. I see a few of them have made it, so I'm going to ask uh, head coach Jamie Bello to come up, and if you want to say a couple words and uh, introduce the kids, and I'll get some uh, City of Lewiston pins for them for the entire team. So come on up, Here Jamie. There. You can use this one. You, you, you get the fancy mic. <laughs> Thanks, um, I didn't really know I was going to speak, but um, I'd like to thank the mayor, the city council members, the administration for recognizing our boys. Um, I know you tried to do it earlier, um, shortly after we won the state championship game, but we had scheduled our banquet. Um, so it was a conflict, and this was the next date that was proposed. It's school vacation week. Um, so many of our players are traveling uh, with their families and the other players are at lacrosse and baseball practice in the gym. But we have five. Um, we had a great year. We have a great, great group of kids. We have a great hockey program. It's really a tribute to these kids. Um, winning one's tough, uh, but for a program to win two and then win three um, is really um, quite amazing. And it's really uh, a tribute to the young men that uh, play in our program and uh, the leadership at our school. So we feel very blessed, and I know I personally feel very blessed to be a part of um, Lewiston and, 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 its, and its hockey program. Um, and so I won't take much more of your time, but we have five players here, and no particular order, Tyler Marku. Um, Tyler, why don't you stand up? Tyler's a junior, uh, was on the team last year and this year, and has, this is his second state championship uh, as, as a junior. We have Jacob Smith, one of our goaltenders. Again, that's Jacob's second year um, in a row. We have Ben. Um, this was Ben's second year. He's a sophomore, first year on the team. We have Sam Frechette. Uh, Sam uh, played as a freshman and started uh, the, the first win as a freshman and uh, won his sophomore year and his junior year. And we have Caden Smith. And Caden uh, was injured until basically all season. This is his junior year, his first year of playing varsity full time. But he didn't really start playing until <coughs> March, uh, Feb the end, February 1st. Um, and was a part of the team and dressed in the state final. So these are five of our players. Um, and, you know, if I, would, I, if I had known, I would have at least mentioned the others. But um, these are five of the gentlemen that were able to make it tonight. We, again, thank you very much for the recognition. Thank you, Coach. And uh, we expect to see you here next year. <laughs> thank you very much. Heard that, boys, right? Uh -huh. Right here. Thank you year from now. Okay, we're moving on to more good news and another presentation. Um, the Spirit of America Foundation is a 501c3 public charity established in 1990 in Augusta, Maine that encourages volunteerism and community service. Each year, the Spirit of America Foundation contacts Maine municipalities to obtain their council's choice for a deserving recipient for the respective year. This year, Lewiston selected the Raise Up Housing Cooperative, and we are recognizing them this month as April is National Volunteer Month. Later in the fall, the Spirit of America Foundation itself will recognize all of the main winning nominees. So do we have anyone here from Raise Up with us? Come on up. Um, I believe we should have a Vanessa Stacy. Stas. Stas, I'm sorry. Brenda Akers, um, Shad Masood, and Craig Saddlemeyer. Okay, and now I guess I'll turn it over to one of our newest city celebrities who seems to be all over the newspaper. This girl is a rock star right now. Yeah. Um, celebrity is going to eclipse ours real soon, folks. Um, so with the Lewiston Youth Advisory Council update, Ms. Emma. All right. So our youth survey project for Lewiston's 12th, 4th, and 8th graders is well underway. 
We're learning more about the youth's perception, perspective, perception of Lewiston, what they like here, and how they foresee Lewiston in their future. So far, we received 55 surveys back from LHS seniors. We have visited 79 fourth graders at McMahon and surveyed them personally due to their age. We'll be serving fourth, grader class, fourth graders on April 23rd and 26th at Farwell and Geiger. Principal Jana Mates at Lewiston Middle School will be forwarding us her eighth graders survey responses and the Youth Council's Emma Wolverton has been getting survey responses from St. Dom's. Mayor Bouchard attended our meeting on April 11th to review what we received so far and it's interesting to see how many seniors wanted to stay in Lewiston or go to school in and around Lewiston instead of going away. Our local restaurants were a hit with all ages and a sense of community and diversity also seem important to those responding. There's more to come as we get more results. We have done outreach for our recycling contacts with local, with local third graders and the teachers were provided with Lewiston recycling information to review with their students. And students have been asked to bring in recyclables to build a class sculpture. So far we have sculpture, sculpture entries from McMahon and Martell and the winning class will have an ice cream social with the youth council to talk about recycling. For the first time in youth council's 17 year history, the graduating seniors will be wearing council cords on June 8th when they gradu during graduation. The youth council Isha Muhammad initiated this because she felt it was important to show that students are participating in, the mu in municipal government. We received the school department approval and our seniors um, Isha and Amina will, will be wearing blue and black cords to represent the, the high school in St. Dom's and the membership. The Lewiston Firefighters Association, LFA, has once again generously provided a $1,000 scholarship for the Youth Council seniors to apply for. Our two seniors have applied for it, and the meeting with the mayor, Councillor Pettengill, Dottie, and Rick Kaler from LFA will take place soon to decide the winner. Applications are now being accepted for the 2018-2019 LEAC year. New this year, students can apply online at lewistonmaine.gov slash youthapply. Hard copies are available in administration or on that web link. Are there any questions? All right, thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Emma. Thank you. Acceptance of the minutes. So, motion by Councilor Joy, second by Councilor Beam. All in favor? Unanimous. Public comment period. Well now, any member of the public wishing to make statements pertaining to Lewiston City Government about an item that's <coughs> not already on the agenda, <coughs> Mr. Sewell. Yes, Charles Sewell, 135 Bartlett Street, Lewiston, Maine. First of all, I want to take my hat off to the governor for uh, uh, promising to veto the, um, the uh, new um, acceptance of the uh, pushing of marijuana <laughs> on our children in the state. Uh, what's getting in the people uh, regards to uh, selling marijuana or recreational marijuana uh, for profit in Maine. I remember when I was growing up and, and um, I running into Edward Muskie, he once told me, he says, uh, you know, the philosophy for Maine is as Maine goes, so go the nation. If they want a uh, drug law uh, to, be, uh, uh, to be treated like prohibition, then um, do a uh, amendment to the Constitution and have every state vote on it instead of piecemealing. And uh, Mr. Sessions, Jeff Sessions, would you please enforce federal law over local state law? Um, I also uh, wanted to ask the mayor, uh, the mayor's uh, father, uh, his window was shot out this weekend, this Saturday morning at two o'clock in the morning when someone sprayed buildings and let off seven shots. I noticed that the police chief is here. Perhaps he would like to speak in regards to what's occurring. Uh, Friday night, there were two shots that went off on uh, Holland Street. Seven went off at two in the morning in my neighborhood, uh, and I live on the uh, pretty close to the corner of Bartlett and Walnut. Uh, the mayor's father uh, lives uh, in the corner of uh, Horton and uh, Walnut and uh, one of the bill bullets went through. Then an individual uh, got shot at, um, in the afternoon on College Street, a 60-year-old man caught a, uh, a, uh, a, a, you know, a, a shot and uh, needed hospital. So uh, maybe the uh, police chief would like to uh, let the people know what's occurring in regards to those. I guess not. Well, anyways, I want, I want to let you know that. 
Um, also, I had a question in regards to last time I was here, there was a uh, talking about uh, floating a bond issue and that the city council would be voting on the bond issue. Is that still an occurrence? Is that going to happen or is that bond going to be placed out for vote uh, by the public of Lewiston? And how much is expected in that bond issue? And how many bond issues are still on the books from prior years that that haven't been resolved? Well, Tough we'll question. Have a, we'll have someone send you an email, Chuck. And, and yeah, but I think this is a forum where you're supposed to be answering questions for the public. This is a forum uh, are you, where we're are supposed you to be commenting. If you have questions, you can email them to the city administrator. Yeah, I'll, yeah, sure I will. I'm sure I will. Now Make sure you, to keep now, the emails clean. Chuck, you're done. Now to the, thank uh, you. Thank, thank you. you. Now to the uh, public. You I see think how you're done I'm now, treated. Chuck. So, um, Mr. Sewell, yeah. have a seat. Yeah, but so remember, you. to the public, this is the treatment you're getting. Keep it in mind. Have a seat. And vote no on the school budget May Okay. 8th. Roll call. Give for your time. All roll call votes for this meeting will begin with the Councilor of Ward 1, and we'll also note for the record that the Councilor from Ward 5, Councilor Cloutier, has an excused absence this evening. Excellent. Agenda item number one. Item number one, uh, public hearing on the renewal application for a special amusement permit for live entertainment for the Ramada Lewiston Hotel and Conference Center, 490 Pleasant Street. Requested action to grant a special amusement permit for live entertainment to the Ramada Lewiston Hotel and Conference Center, 490 Pleasant Street. So moved. Second. A motion by Councilor Lyson, seconded by Councilor Beam. A discussion on the Council? Public? Back to the Council. Call the roll. Council from Ward 1? Yes. Ward 2? Yes. Ward 3? Yes. Ward 4? Yes. Ward 6? Yes. Ward 7? Yes. And Mr. Mayor? Yes. Motion passed by vote of 7 to 0. Agenda item number 2. Item number 2, public hearing on the renewal application for a special amusement permit for live entertainment for Little Joe's Bar and Grill, 740 Sabata Street. Requested action to grant a special amusement permit for live entertainment to Little Joe's Bar and Grill, 740 Sabata Street. So moved. Second. Okay. Motion by Councilor License, seconded by Councilor Pattengill. Council. Public. Council. Call the roll. Council from Ward 1? Yes. Ward 2? Yes. Ward 3? Yes. Ward 4? Yes. Ward 6? Yes. Ward 7? Yes. And Mr. Mayor? Yes. Motion passed by vote of 7 to 0. Agenda item number 3. Item number three, authorization, <clears throat> excuse me, to accept transfer of forfeiture funds, requested action that pursuant to Title 15, Maine Revised Statutes Annotated, Section 5824.3 and Section 5822.4a, the City Council hereby authorizes and approves of the transfer of items as outlined on the attached listing, less administrative fees or any portion thereof in the cases of U.S. Department of Justice Drug Enforcement Administration versus the cases outlined on the attached listing being funds forfeited pursuant to court process. It is further acknowledged that these funds shall be credited to the City of Lewiston Drug Enforcement Program account. So moved. Second. Motion by Councillor Ray, seconded by Councillor Pettengill. Councillor Marcotte. Uh, I see some pretty large numbers here. I assume that uh, we're sharing this with other. That would be correct. We would be sharing those with any other agency that was involved in the uh, effort to, um, to prosecute a crime. Any idea what we stand percentage-wise? Uh, Chief, you have any? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is an ongoing <clears throat> criminal case, and we're looking at probably between 7 and 9 percent, but it's ultimately the feds decide how much we get. So you'll be seeing these, and they've been coming across um, Kathy's desk, coming to you folks. Uh, the last couple of months, this one particular case. So we'll get a certain percentage of it. Um, I can't tell you how much it is going to be right now, but you know that's something to look forward to maybe in, in the fall. And I assume that uh, these valuations, uh, some sort of an appraisal on the property, not necessarily what will be. That's correct. If that's for. exactly what they actually um, go for auction, what we'll get, we'll do, you know, that's really up to the market. And, and then it would be 7 or 9% of that. That's correct. Council, the public, back to the council. Call the roll. Council from Ward 1? Yes. Ward 2? Yes. Ward 3? Yes. Ward 4? Yes. Ward 6? Yes. Ward 7? Yes. Ward 1. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Motion passed by a vote of 7 to 0. Um, 
Agenda item number four. Item number four, amendment to the traffic schedule regarding loading zones on Bates Street. Requested action to approve an amendment to the traffic schedule regarding the addition of two loading zone parking spot designations on Bates Street as outlined on the attached memorandum. So moved. Second. Motion by Councillor Lyson, seconded by Councillor LaJoy. Discussion on the council. Just Public. Oh, sorry. Um, the loading zones would be certain times of the day. I believe they're talking about Monday through Friday, 7.30 uh, a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Okay, so they'd be available to public parking uh, at other times? Yes, correct. Okay. Thanks, Councilor Pettengill? Um, I, is the recommendation of two spots um, based on a traffic study or at the, the request of the Head Start? I believe it's at the request of the head. It was at the request of, well, it's called early promise now with the director there. Due to the drop off and with the staff, the parking has become a little hectic for them. Um, so they'd like to have those spots, uh, spots available so when the parents come to drop their kids off, then um, they'll have easy access to it. Yeah, I, uh, my, my question was more in regards to is uh, two spots adequate for that? Um, and I, I only asked because. Well, for that location, if they go any further, you're going to get too close to the corner. Yeah. Um, so that's really what there is available for them to park over there. Okay. Um, and then it, is the, the signage dedicated in a way that it locks up those spots from 7.30 to 4.30, Monday through Friday, or? Yes, it will be. Public Works will post those signs for us. Okay. Because um, the, the reality of it, and I, I, I own a daycare. And, you know, and it's, it's only ever busy for 45 minutes from the start of that to 45 minutes at the end of it. And those spots sit empty, you know, the, the whole rest of the time. Um, and for that location, you've got um, Trinity Church and then you've got Early Promise on the B Street. So really the parking is used by the folks that go to the Early Promise as it is now. Okay. Yeah, I, I just I don't want to see it not being able to be utilized in those those off times for them. Or ticketed, yeah. Yeah. So, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Call the roll. Council from Ward 1? Yes. Ward 2? Yes. Ward 3? Yes. Ward 4? Yes. Ward 6? Yes. Ward 7? Yes. And Mr. Mayor? Yes. Motion passed by vote of 7 to 0. Agenda item number 5. Item number 5, appointment to the Lewiston Area Public Health Committee. Requested action to appoint the following nominee to the Lewiston Area Public Health Committee. Public health expert Veronica Vicki Wegman. So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Councillor Ray, seconded by Councillor Pettengill. Discussion on the council. Councillor Ray. Is this because um, this, sorry. Uh, is Veronica Wegman not a resident of the area and that's okay. I'm thinking that's correct okay and that's why it's this public health expert correct. in addition okay just wanted to clarify public back to the council call the roll Council from Ward 1? Yes. Ward 2? Yes. Ward 3? Yes. Ward 4? Yes. Ward 6? Yes. Ward 7? Yes. And Mr. Mayor? Yes. Motion passed by vote of 7 to 0. Okay. Reports and updates. I believe Councillor Ray has a public service announcement. I do. During the last full week in April, Monday, April 23rd through Friday, April 27th, Lewiston's Public Works Department will collect brush from residential properties. Quantities are limited to no more than one standard pickup truck load per residence. All brush to be collected by city staff must be curbside no later than Sunday, April 22nd. Once city staff have collected brush from a, a given street, they will not return to collect brush from that street. Lewiston Public Works Department staff will not be collecting tree stumps, wood greater than 12 inches in diameter, or any demolition wood such as fencing, old decking, or wood from construction slash demolition projects. For residents, all details are available at lewistonmain.gov slash cleanup18. Thank, Thank you. you, Alicia. Are there any other reports and updates? Okay. Any other city business councilors may have? Ed, anything? Excellent. Councilor Lyson. I'd like to enter uh, a 
present a motion to enter an executive session pursuant to MRSA Title I, Section 4056E, for those of you who are listening, to discuss a legal matter. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. 